Give me up on this a little bit, y'all. Amen. Y'all get right behind the book. All right. All right. What you're seeing here today is uh, what we call the bus ministry. And we have people, we are it every Saturday, every Saturday, and uh, knock on people's doors. They can go back Sunday morning, pick them up with the bus. And so they are all excited today, and we got a bunch of adults and stuff sitting out here that did not come on a bus. But this is what's called the bus ministry, and our church has the largest bus ministry in this area, in Burt County and a couple more, and we thank the Lord for that. I'm thankful for people who care about people. We have people every Sunday morning get up 6.30, hit the bus 7.30, ride till 10 o'clock, and they won't get home from church till 4 o'clock this evening after the activities. And so that's good. And the best way for you to be happy is invest some time in other people. If it's all you, me, 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 I, 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 you ain't never going to be happy like that. Best way to be happy, try to help somebody else. And so we're really glad that you're here this morning. Make yourself at home. We got people here from all over the place. We want you to make yourself at home. But we want you to see these kids. And uh, I'm going to ask you a question. Is there anybody like hot dogs? No. Okay, good. We are saved this one right there. Now, we got 160 of them this morning. And ain't got but 200 hot dogs. So we split them right down the middle. You can split them hot dogs down the middle and cook them a long time. They swell up. <laughs> you make you make two hot dogs out of one hot dog. I learned that a long time ago. Might have to make three. But I, I believe everybody's going to get a hot dog. Do you like a water slide? All right. Where's, uh, where's that John David guy at? Where's he at? Where's John David? Is he here? Send him out here for a minute. Come here a minute, big boy. I want him to say something. Mm. I, I want him to say something. You know I was going to do that? You know I was going to have you out here? All right, everybody listen. How many languages you speak? Three different languages. I think that's something. Say Jesus loves me in something besides English. Jesus te ama. What is that? Oh, I mean, what language? <laughs> that's, that's Spanish. Hey, listen. Now you, I'm going to teach you another language called hick. See, I know a little bit of English and I know hick. I know redneck, so I know three languages. English, redneck, and hick. And I'll teach you a little redneck. I'll speak a little jeet and jew. Everybody here knows what jeet and jew means? Yes. Bus workers? They learned it yesterday. You know, somebody comes in and say, jeet? No, jew. You know, you know what it means. Some of y'all still don't understand that. Somebody said, did you eat? No, did you? Did you eat? No, did you? It's just jeet and jew. So now you know another language. Isn't that cool? All right. Uh, there's no use going to saying all them syllables, did you eat? Just chop it off on both ends and say the middle. That's what you do out in the country. That's right. All right. We're going to let you get back there to your class today. They're going to have something really special for you. Man, where'd you get that? Don't you look what a piece of chocolate that dude's got. Done eat the head off of it. That's the way my daddy had my hair cut when I was like that. Look just like his. <laughs> that goes in your mouth now. Are you going to eat all that? Lord have mercy. But listen, the truth is known. The truth is known. Y'all wouldn't believe. You would not believe where some of these kids come from. You would not believe that the only Christmas present some of them get is what our church gets them. You want to invest in something? Invest in that. Invest in that. God will bless you for it. Okay? All right, let's sing Jesus Loves Me. Everybody know Jesus Loves Me? Let's sing. Everybody should know that. We have no practice, but we're going to try. Hit it for me, Miss Desi. We're going to try Jesus Loves Me. Ready? Here we go. Ready? Jesus Loves Me. Let's go this way, she's playing. 
All right, let's go this way. Come on down. You're going to need class. Let's give them a big hand this morning. Wasn't that good? Give them a good hand. Sure, camera's on, Ronnie. Mr. Andy was, right? On, online. All right. While they're finishing up now, we're going to move real quick this morning because we've got a lot to talk about. Um, I want to go ahead and uh, uh, receive our offering right quick because we're, we're moving fast today. And I hope that you'll give and honor the Lord. me to give a little bit of my testimony. I'll try not to be long. Um, I was born in the South Bronx in the 1980s, um, about a mile from Yankee Stadium. And this was when uh, the crack epidemic had got really bad. Um, there was drugs everywhere, uh, violence everywhere. I remember at night I would look out the back window of our apartment and I could hear constant gunshots. Um, that's why being in the South now, people shoot for sport and it makes me nervous. <laughs> Um, and I'm just not, I can't get over that. I'm not used to it. I hear it and I, you know, I want to duck and cover. Um, yeah. But um, anyway, um, we went to Catholic school because the public schools there were not really good. And um, I did get to hear about Jesus, but um, not in the right doctrine, you know. Um, but I did, however, have um, my Aunt Vivian and my Uncle Ralph were uh, Christians, they were Baptists, and, um, you know, they were always at their church, and their home was a different environment, so I liked being at their house because, um, you know, I could feel the Lord there, I could feel a different environment, and they were a really good influence on me. Um, eventually, we moved to New Jersey, um, and soon after that, I had found out that my father had been murdered in the Bronx. Um, hadn't heard from him, seen him in a long time, and got bad news, but um, that's just how things were there. Um, it's a hard thing to go through uh, as an 11-year-old. Um, so I uh, graduated high school. I went to St. John's University on Staten Island, and um, I still kind of thought Catholicism was the way to go. Um, so I went through a program called the RCIA, and um, that stands for Roman Catholic Initiative of Adults, and I felt like I had to get my sacraments and all that, you know, how they do. Um, so I went through that, but you know, I, it didn't do anything for me. Um, I was still lost. Um, I moved here to North Carolina when I was about 21, met my husband. Um, and one day I was watching TV and there was a older preacher on there and he kept saying, you must be born again. And I had never heard that before in my life. Um, it just, yeah. it, to my ears, it didn't even, he wasn't saying it right. Yeah. You know, he just kept saying, you must be yeah. born again. Um, and so, you know, I've kind of thought about that a little bit, and um, a few nights later, I was watching TBN, actually, and I think Stevie Wonder was singing that song, Falling in Love with Jesus, and um, and I just, I thought about that, I listened to the song, and it was like just whispering in my ear, you must be born again, you yeah. must be born again, yeah. and um, so I just knelt and prayed, and you know, uh, God touched me right there, and I got saved, um, and um, you know, I realized that I needed preaching, I needed a Bible, I needed, so I started listening to the radio, and I came across Brother Danny on 1270 AM, comes on every day at one o'clock, I still listen every day at one o'clock, um, and I just, there was a difference in how he preached, you know, he preached the Bible, I could tell it was the truth, and it just, something in me was like, this is it, this yeah. is what you've been needing, um, and so, um, you know, we lived in Gastonia, we used to drive um, an hour from Gastonia until we were able to move to Lincolnton, and we chose to move to Lincolnton so we could be closer to the church. Um, and, um, you know, it's just a blessing to be a part of a Bible-believing church that right. preaches the King James Bible. No apologies. Amen. I can raise my five kids here yeah. and know that I'm putting the right things in them. That's and, right. um, 
you know, the Holy Ghost is welcome here, and um, it's just, it's a blessing, and I thank God for it. Um, so I have a letter here um, from Brother Russ in South Dakota, I believe, that I'm going to read. Um, and it says, I just finished watching, listening to your message, Unclean Spirits, on YouTube. Praise the Lord. That was an amazing Holy Spirit-filled hour and nine minutes. I don't know how these folks can stay seated. That was a glorious service, singing, music, and preaching. I kept looking at how much time was left till it ended. I hoped time would stand still like Joshua 10 or go backwards like 2 Kings 20. Have you ever taken an IQ test? I think you'd be right up there with your top three, Rush, O'Reilly, and Ruffman. Our spiritual condition is dead and dry and Sioux Falls. There's no KJV church that I'm aware of doing church organized door-to-door -door evangelism on a consistent basis. I'm praying about moving within a year as the Lord leads, praying for you and your ministry for souls to be challenged, convicted, comforted, and saved as the Holy Spirit has freedom and ease to move amongst you for God will to be accomplished and the Lord Jesus Christ be honored and glorified and praised. Thank you for your prayers, yours in Christ, Brother Russ. Amen. Amen. Want well, that a blessing? Say amen. Amen. I'd just like to thank the Lord for our church. I personally and my husband have been under Brother Danny's preaching for 23 years. And I love our church. I, it's a family. I spend more time with you people than I spend with my own biological family. And I, I love y'all. And I love our church. I love Brother Danny. And if you're looking for a good church home, I think you might have found it this morning. And uh, there's nowhere else I'd rather be in this county and any other county. I, I think we, we have the greatest church on earth. I truly Amen. do. Uh, this is from San Francisco, California. It's called Born Again. Greetings and salutations. My name is Brian, and I got the good news four years ago. Praise God. I was born again, and I haven't been the same since. Four years ago, I was on a path that was leading me to hell, and I didn't know it. Living in California, an hour from San Francisco, I was an artist and a former bouncer who was growing weed in his rented garage, raising a son with a living girlfriend. I shared custody of my son with my ex-wife, 50-50, who had run out on me. I harbored so much hate towards my ex-wife and her now husband who broke up our home that it was eating me alive. I've always enjoyed conspiracy theory, research, and love reading books, and I had begun listening to things on YouTube about the occult. I happened upon a video about a, happened upon a, video about a satanic influences on music when, my, my, when a scene of Marilyn Manson throwing Bible pages in the crowd with a narration by an extremely fired up person grabbed me. The person narrating was so passionate and yelling like an old wrestling announcer about the despicable actions of the rock star that I was intrigued. I said to myself, who is this wild man? He sounds like a 10-foot tall breathing maniac. I tracked down the name of the preacher, Danny Castle, and found a trove of sermons on YouTube. Growing up in a secular home, I had never listened to preaching before, and I just recently realized that Jesus Christ was a real person with an overwhelming amount of evidence about his historical existence. I had been led to believe that Christ was an amalgamation of myths, but kept digging curious about the truth and answers to the great mysteries of earth. Amen. Well, I listened to one sermon of Danny Castle, and I was hooked. I wanted to know more about this guy, Jesus. Yep. By the time I got to the end of the third sermon, I had listened to called Found Dog. When Danny told a story about a rich man and a mangy old dog, I tell you what, something got a hold of me, and it was real. Tears started throwing, flowing down my face, and I gave my heart to Jesus Christ. Amen. So much has changed in my life since then. I was able to, for, to forgive my ex and her husband. I told Christ, I told them that Christ forgave me so I can forgive you, and it was supernatural. I felt, immediate, I felt better immediately, and I started going to a local church. My girlfriend got saved, my four-year-old son got saved, and we all got baptized. My ex-wife saw the change in us, and she got saved with her husband and started going to church and got baptized also. My girlfriend became my wife and became a special education teacher. I got on the path of righteousness and left that old life behind. I started working at a Christian nonprofit camp, and I'm still there and loving it. We bought a house and have flourished after we knew to build our house on the rock that is Jesus Christ. Amen. I've listened to every sermon I could get a hold of and listen and watch everything that comes out of Shining Light Baptist Church 
where Danny Castle preaches. All of those questions about the mysteries of life, I finally had the answer that made sense to everything, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for the good fight, Danny. My family keeps you, your family, and shining light in our prayers. Stay fired up for Christ in California, Brian Hart. Amen. Isn't that a blessing? Ain't that something? Who would have thought that? I mean, out in California. Amen. And they'll get them from Australia, England, Africa, all the time. It's crazy, isn't it? Well, praise the Lord for that. Actually, I have taken an IQ test. And it came out and said, uh, this person qualifies for government-assisted living. <laughs> but I'm going to preach as long as you'll let me. Let's turn the Bibles to uh, Psalm 139, please. Psalm 139. Let's all uh, look at the verse of Scripture here this morning. And I want to give you just a little thought here today. It won't be long. Uh, what do you want me to do? Put that thing on too. They're, they're double micing me today. These are, this one's going somewhere else. Uh, Psalm 139. I'm gonna look at one verse of scripture there. I'll try to get this on here, brother Bill. I'm gonna be uh, wired up so much here they're gonna lightning strike me or something. But um, let's all look at Psalm 139 and verse seven. Psalm 139, verse seven. And that verse is talking about how that God knows everything, sees everything, and look at it, Psalm 139, 7. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up to heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. You know what he's saying there? He's saying no matter where I am, God sees me. No matter what I'm doing, God sees me. That's right, isn't it? I want to preach this morning just for a few minutes on this subject. You cannot outrun God. You cannot outrun God. You just can't do it. The Bible said in Proverbs 15, or 10 and 3, uh, 15 and 3, the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. Right now, God sees every corner on this earth. Right now, God sees every honky-tonk, every drug house, every church, every corner in your closet. He knows everything you did yesterday. He knows everything you did the day before yesterday. He knows what you're going to do today and tomorrow. You cannot outrun him. My preacher used to tell me, he said, you can't outrun God. He said, you try to run from God, he'll be there waiting on you and don't have to move to get there. I thought about, I had a, I had a ball one day. I this ball like this, this ant was crawling on that ball. And I guess every, all them ant legs and ants got, he looked up and seen my face and he took off a flying. Just as fast as them little legs would go trying to get away from me. And I held that ball like that, and I said, you crazy thing. You can't. And he'd run around, and he'd go, all I got to do is turn it like that, going somewhere, you know. And, and he'd look up here and see my face. And that that ain't thing can't get away from me. You know, Bible said god got this world in his hands. You know that, right, people? You know that you can't hide from him, and you know that you can't outrun him. You, know, you can't beat him. You just got to join him and get on his side. Now, the Bible said that uh, in, the, in the Word of God, in Job chapter 34 and verse 22, there is no darkness nor shadow of death where the work, workers of iniquity may hide them. You can go down in them old dark steps of that nightclub and they can turn them lights down low to where you can't hardly see. You know why they turn them lights so dark in them places? Make them old ugly women look better. And they put, they turn, you can turn the lights down, and you know, but God still knows you're there. And God tracked you down and he knows where you're at and you cannot get away from him. I want to tell you a couple of stories this morning, just, just a little bit uh, for a minute today and tell you some stories about some men in the Bible. That's why you come to church, you're the Bible, right? I want to tell you about some men in the Bible who tried to outrun God, who tried to outrun God. There's a man in the Bible named Jacob, first of all. He's back in Genesis chapter 27, 28, and 29. Let me tell you a story. Everybody give me attention just a second. In the Bible, uh, every psychologist and psychiatrist needs to study the Bible. 
because the Bible's the greatest book in the world on human nature. And it tells you why people act like they act and why you have feelings like you have and why you do the things you do. The Bible's got all that covered down pat. It's a great study in human nature. Over there in, in Genesis 27, old Jacob, he's a supplanter. That means he, he wants to try to get ahead all the time. He's beating his, everybody else, get, making good money, doing stuff like that. And the Bible said one day that he, he had this older brother named Esau. And Jacob and Esau, he's a little bit younger than him, and he wanted his brother's blessings. In, the, in that day, the oldest son got a double portion of his daddy's inheritance. And he wanted it. Now, it just so happened that his brother Esau, the oldest one, didn't care. And Esau threw around one day and he said, Now, how can I, how can I figure out how to beat him out of what, what's coming to him? I want, I want that and I don't want him to have it. So here's what he done. Him and his mama come up with this plot. And he said, Esau was a real hairy guy. Had a lot of hair on his arms, a lot of hair on his legs, hair on his chest. And, you know, uh, you know if, usually if it falls here, winds up here. And, uh, and that's, that's the way Esau was. And, he, he, he had a lot, and Jacob was a smooth man. He had no hair on his arms like that. No hair, uh, hardly no beard or anything. And he said, I know what I could do. Daddy's about blind, so I think if I tricked him that I could get my brother's blessing. So he goes out and gets this hair like some old hair and gets some that gorilla glue, squirts it down his arm down through here like that and puts that hair on his arm like this. And he said, now, I'm going to go in. And here's, here's his daddy. He's sitting here almost blind like this. The great man, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, second in line, Isaac. And he's sitting there like this. And he says, somebody wants to see you, sir. It's your son. He comes in and says, hi, dad. He said, come in, my son, uh, Jacob. And he said, I'm not Jacob. I'm Esau. And he said, you sound like Jacob. And he said, I mean, I'm Esau. And he said, okay, come on in, Esau. And he said, I want my blessing. I'm ready for my blessing. Can you give him my blessing? And his daddy said, I don't know. Are you sure you're Esau? He said, look, look, get, get out here and get out here and feel my arm right here. Feel my arm right here. Like you you got to kind of remember which character you're in. <laughs> feel my arm right here, Dad. I'm Esau. He said, your voice sounds like Jacob, but you feel like Esau. He said, I'm Esau. Don't you worry about that. And his daddy said, all right. So he put his hand on him and said, God, bless this man. God, prosper this man. God, everything he touches turns into gold. That's why them Jews can do that. That's right. Everything he touches, he makes money off of. And put it on him, God. Put it on him. And he said, thanks, Dad. See you later. And goes out the door. Well, you know the story, really, in a little bit, Esau really does come in. He said, I'm here for my blessing, Dad. He said, you was just here for your blessing. No, I wasn't. I just came in from the field. He said, son, somebody, your brother. And, buddy, he got mad. He said, I'll kill him. He went and got the shotgun, loaded that thing up. He said, buddy, when I get a hold of that, thing, I'll blow his brains out. That's sorry, good for nothing, brother of mine, Jacob. I'm going to kill him. And Jacob found out, and Jacob run. Jacob run from home. Are you listening? Jacob run from the presence of God. Jacob run way down the farm. Listen, you can run, 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 run. Let me tell you how this story ended. He went down there and married this girl. That's, that'll come in a minute. But he went down there and got him a job for a man named Laban. And this man put him to work with his sheep. And one day, he got fell in love with his daughter. And this man had two daughters, Rachel and, uh, and uh, I'm sorry, uh, Rebecca and Leah. And one of them, one of these two sisters was really, really pretty, Rebecca. And the other one was... Not as pretty. Now, it's funny how the, you have two sisters. One of them is beautiful, and the other one would scare a freight train out of the way on for a track at night. Now, this girl, she, they had two sisters. So he said, uh, he said, I tell you what, I want to marry your daughter. And he fell in love with the youngest one. And he said, I tell you what you got to do. If you want to marry her, you're going to work seven years before you married her. 
and, and, and she, was, uh, he, she was beautiful. And he said, man, I'm telling you, seven years, he ain't like some of these boys are now. He's willing to wait seven years on that girl. He's willing to work seven years. He, he didn't say, well, I ain't got no job and we're going to live in your basement, but I want to make, no, 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 no. He said, you, you got to work seven years. Seven years, boy. You go out here and you work, and if you still like her then, after seven years, I'll let you marry her. So he worked seven long years, seven long years. Now, it just so happened that the older sister, Leah, hadn't got a boyfriend during that time because she wasn't as pretty. I'll say it in a nice way. And uh, she wasn't as attractive. And so when the wedding night came, when this wedding night came, they, could, they set this wedding up, and it was day, late in the evening, those Jewish wedding. The bride comes in completely covered with a veil over her face. She comes in like this. A dun, dun, ta dun, 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 ta dun. Here stands Jacob. Here's, I've waited seven years for you, baby. I've married them to you tonight. And woo! Guess what? They performed the ceremony. The preacher said, I do. He grabs her by the hand. They didn't have no long honeymoon. They went in a tent. And that was a honeymoon. Now, this is a weird story. I don't know how all this happened, but somehow or another, he slipped the wrong girl. He slipped the older sister in because the older sister is supposed to get married first. Tradition. So he married the older sister, not the one he wanted. I don't understand this, but the next morning, <laughs> he pulls her up and says, Ah! What are you doing here? Like old Billy Kelly said, he said he hadn't ever been on but one blind date, and he wished he was blind when he got there. <laughs> and my man's like, uh, but anyway, but anyway, he, he looked at her and said, Lord, have mercy. What are you doing here? He going to say, man, what, what's wrong with you? I married the wrong one. He said, it's a custom. You've got to marry the oldest one off before the youngest one. He said, man, you tricked me like crazy. What do you think his mind went back to right then? Remember the harm? I'm Esau. Hey. Can I tell you, listen, I quit right now and you'd have enough truth to live off of for another week. Whatever you do is going to come back on you. <laughs> However you treat people, the old people used to say this, what goes around what? Comes around, that's right. I'm telling you, brother, listen, I, the, the Bible said you'll reap what you sow. Whatever you do wrong, I guarantee it, you'll meet it again one day and it'll be 10 times worse than what you thought it was going to be. Guarantee it can't miss. So he worked seven more years for the right one. Fourteen years. Married her, went out to sleep, went down with sleep one day, and God said, going somewhere? Caught up with him while he's asleep. The angel of the Lord, he had that pillar that was a rock, and God caught him. Listen, we're getting ready to go to camp. Those kids do not realize, we was, telling, we was telling blonde jokes the other day, and all my girls over there, they're all blondes, and I, so it don't mean nothing personal. Uh, you know, it's, it, nothing wrong with it, but we was telling blonde jokes. They're all blonde. They all got blonde roots. Well, I'm telling you, you, I mean, we told one down in Georgia, and this girl didn't get it. She had to act like she got it. We're getting ready to go to camp tomorrow with about 140 young people that have grown bodies and no brains. That's bad shape to be in. You about that blonde? She's out there with a weed, weed eater one day. I like got white and white cut her cat's tail off. And it's bleeding, flopping all over the place. She grabbed it and put it in a box and went to Walmart. She heard they was the world's largest retailer. <laughs> and, and that's where that's where these kids are, man. I, I, know, I heard one other day. This, no, I heard one the other day where these two blondes were watching the 11 o'clock news. And they're watching 11 o'clock news, and one of them said, and they're showing somebody about ready to jump off a bridge. She said, oh, no, oh, no, he's going to jump off the bridge. She said, he won't do it. He won't do it. I bet you anything he won't do it. I bet you, why are you so sure? I know he won't. He ain't going to do it. About that time the guy jumped. She said, I thought you knew he wouldn't do it. She said, I watched it at 10 o'clock, and he did it. I didn't think he was stupid enough to do it again. <laughs> That's the kind of people we're dealing with in churches now. I'm telling you, people, you you got to remember, you can't just treat God any old way. You can't just do whatever you want to and God look down and smile and say, well, it's all right. No, no, he'll catch up with you. 
He'll get you. He's waiting on you. And don't have to move to get you there. Ain't that right? Sure is, buddy. Sure is. Like the girl sitting out there one time and there's two sitting there and she said, she looked at the moon and said, I wonder which is further, Florida or the moon? And she said, duh, you can see the moon. And there's a bunch of young people in here right now that that went right straight over your head. <laughs> hey, man, listen, listen. You can't beat God. Are you listening to me? You listen to me? The chances of you running away from God and getting away with what you're doing wrong. Listen, Stevie Wonder would find Bin Laden before God will let you by and not see what you're doing wrong. Say amen right there. Amen. Lady Doo will teach Sunday school and wear uh, decent clothes uh, when, when God can't find you. God's got you right in his hand. You ain't gonna get away from God. Listen, Justin Bieber will have to get a job at McDonald's to pay his bills when, when God quits looking at what you're doing. It ain't gonna happen. He ain't gonna let you buy. Bill Gates will be on food stamps before, before God misses one thing that you do. He don't do it. Hey, Donald Trump and Hillary will have an affair and run off together before God lets you buy with anything. Yeah, that ain't going to happen, is it? I think his wife's a little bit prettier than Hillary. Lord have mercy. they like that blind date. Hey, Kim Kartrashian will come out with no makeup so nobody can recognize her before God quits looking at what you're doing. Kanye West will be nice to a white girl, brother, before God turns his back on what you're doing wrong. Ain't going to happen. Ain't gonna happen. Lady, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. Today, I'm telling you, you don't, God's got you numbered and he don't have to move to get there. There's another man in the Bible tried to outrun God. His name was Elijah. And Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse three, the Bible says through discouragement and despondency, he ran from God by being scared of one. Now, this man had a lot of victories in his life. This man had won a lot of great battles. He had just slew 400 prophets of Baal, 50, 450. And this woman Jezebel got after him and she said, I'll have that preacher killed by tomorrow. He'll be a dead man by this time tomorrow. So he runs and he runs from the will of God, runs from the presence of God, runs from the power of God. And again, he lays down under a juniper tree and goes to sleep. Isn't it funny that God caught, John, uh, caught Jacob asleep? God caught Elijah asleep. Going somewhere? I've been out here waiting on you. And you know what God did? God told Elijah, hey, you know, I heard about an old, old guy give his testimony and he'd been on drugs and been in rock music gangs and rap and everything else. And he, he said his mama prayed for him all his life. And she prayed, son, get saved, son, live right, go to church. Just aggravate him to death. If you've got a mom and dad that aggravates you, get you to live right, you ought to get down on your knees and thank God. And he said, she fussed at me all the time. She tried to, tried to get preached to me all the time, and I didn't want to listen. He said, I run and join the army. He said, I get away from you. I get away from the church. I get away from the preacher. I'm running and run and join the army. And he said, there's like 78 men in his little group that count and bunks and there's two Christians and they put him in the bed right between them two guys. The Lord said, going somewhere? And they preached to him all. Listen, you can't outrun God. There's another man in the Bible tried to outrun God. Brother Mike mentioned him in Sunday. His name was Jonah. Jonah, you know the story? Jonah's going like this and the Lord said, hey, you want to preach? Yes, sir, I'll be glad to. What you need me to do? And the Lord said, I want you to go to Nineveh and preach a revival. And he said, I ain't going to do it. He's some kind of a racist or a bigger son. He said, I don't like them people. I don't want to go around them. I ain't going down there to preach. And he said, the Lord said, it's right down there, and that's what I want you to do. And he runs. The Bible said he ran from the presence of the Lord. You know what? Where'd that going to get you? He took off and run from God and he went down and took him a cruise, went on a cruise. Paid the ship ticket, went down, went down, went down, got down in the side of that ship and went to sleep. That's strange, isn't it? All three of them went to sleep. About that time, wind started blowing. 
waves higher than this, this building come across there. That ship started. I don't know if you've ever been on a boat when it's like that. I've been on, I was on one one time. And it wasn't about as big as from here at the back of the church, probably about 150 people. They're supposed to be taking us from one ship to another or something. And I'm telling you, the storm come up, and that thing go like this. It went whoosh. And you can see the other pe people sitting on the other side right there. And then it go whoosh. And then whoosh. Like, and honest to goodness, I said, dear Lord, if you'll let me get off of here, I will never get on. The, I'm telling you, buddy, it's, there ain't nothing around you but water. I'm telling you, have, have you been in the ocean lately? Some of you have. Maybe this summer, I was in Florida a couple of weeks ago. Man, there's a lot of water out there. Like them two drunks went down there and they ain't seen the ocean. One of them standing there drunk. And he said, why, there's a lot of water out there, ain't it, Harry? And he said, yeah, and that's just the top of it. <laughs> I think about that. There's a lot of water out there, y'all. Jonah goes out there and they work down and they kick him and wake him up. And the Lord says, you going somewhere, buddy? Asleep. And they woke him up. And about that time, God spoke to a whale over here. You say, man is the only creature that God made that won't obey him. He told a rooster to crow. He told a fish to swallow some money, pay taxes. He told... Uh, the, the donkey to speak in the Old Testament. And the Lord says, uh, 90 degrees left. So much degree up. Swim, boy, swim. And he goes in there, and about that time he says, open your mouth. And about that time they threw Jonah off of that boat, and he hit that water. And that fish says, mm, they had me a good mess of man in a long time. I want that with tartar sauce and french fries and go on, and he go. Now, as far as we know, look, as far as we know, I've studied this for years. Jonah didn't even know what happened to him. If you're swimming in the ocean and all of a sudden everything went black and you felt yourself on blubber, real soft, yucky, slick, and you, you wouldn't know what, you wouldn't know where you're at. It's like a water slide in that pool. Now, can you imagine, you know, when you spit up, it tastes like battery acid or something in your mouth. Think what's in a whale's gut. And I'm telling you, he is in that belly there for three days and three nights. The Lord said, going somewhere. My thought to you this morning is, you ain't going to get away from him. It ain't going to happen. You can't outrun God. He's got you like this. You, got you. you can come the easy way or the hard way. You can get right with God the easy way or you can get right with God the hard way. Take your pick. But he's got your number. Everyone, everybody here. If you're here this morning and you've never been saved, he's got you. See, when Jonah got right, the Lord said, okay, I'll straighten out your problems now. You ain't gonna get, your problems ain't gonna get straightened out until you get right with God. I meet people all the time and say, well, when I get some things straightened out, I'm coming to church, preacher. That ain't the way, that's like saying I'm gonna wait till I get better and then go to the doctor. You, you know, you just go to the doctor then. You go to church when your life is messed up and the Lord will help you. And after three days, God said, spit him out. And the whale got sick and threw up. And Jonah had a whale puke on him and come running into town and preach that mighty revival and all them people got saved. And God caught up with him when he was asleep. Now listen to this and I'm through. Sleep in the Bible is a picture of death. All the way through the Bible. If you want to feel how it feels to die, it's just like going to sleep. That's what it feels like. You're unconscious, you don't know anything, and your soul leaves your body and goes to heaven or hell immediately. Now listen, if you, when you go to sleep, that's a picture of you dying. When you wake up the next morning, that's a picture of the resurrection. You hear me well, hear me well. It doesn't matter how far you run, how hard you party, how, many, how high you get, one day they're going to catch up with you. And God's going to catch you when you die. You going somewhere? This ain't my opinion. This is the Bible. Every person in here today is going to meet God face to face. Now, you're either going to meet him one of two ways. You're going to meet him ready 
or not ready? You know how you're ready? It's just like when I go get on an airplane, some of these guys fly a lot. You know, you know what they want to see when you go to that airplane? They want to see your ticket. I don't go to the airport and say, uh, I'm a preacher, let me on here. Get out of here, man. Lord, call security on you. Who are you anyway? Uh, I want to get on this airplane. Well, who, where's your ticket? I go to church every Sunday. Man, you drunk? Get out of here, man. We ain't got time to fool you. you know, look, you don't understand. I pay my bills. I try to treat people right. If I've if I done somebody wrong, I try to make it right with them. I try the best. Look, dude, I'm impressed. But you ain't getting on this airplane without no ticket. Now, you know what your ticket is? Your ticket is Jesus Christ died for you on the cross. That's your ticket. Whenever you die, that's what you present to the Lord. You don't say, well, Lord, I've been a good man. You ain't been no good man. Ain't nobody been no good man. There's none good, no, not one. I ain't good, you ain't good, and your grandma ain't, and papa ain't. There is none good. When I die, I'll say, here's my ticket. And the angel will say, right this way, Mr. Castle, get on in here, and that's your ticket in. You don't want to meet God. Not ready. You don't want to meet God. Not ready. You can't outrun him. I heard about this guy. He's going down the road. Truck driver. And this truck driver, he was behind this car and had a bumper sticker on the back of that car. It said, at the end of the road, you'll meet God. And he started thinking, at the end of the road, I'll meet God. At the end of the road, I'll meet God. I'm going to be at the end of this road pretty soon. And I'm going to be at the end of my life pretty soon. And I'm going to meet God. Look, we're here to have fun today and we're going to eat hot dogs. And we're gonna, but at the end of the road, you're going to meet God, people. You're going to meet God, you hear me? You're going to meet God. You ought to get ready. You ought to get ready today. Some of you haven't been to church maybe in a long time. Maybe never, I don't know. A lot of folks here I don't even know. I promise you one thing. You will meet God one day. Be ready. I want you to stand by your head, please. Nobody's moving. Nobody's talking. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. We're going to have a song here this morning. God's speaking to your heart. Every head's bowed every eye's closed. Nobody's talking. I won't pray with you. Heavenly Father, I pray right now for that man, that woman, that boy, that girl, whoever it is here today that might need you, need to make things right with you. I pray this will be the day they'll do it. I pray for that teenager, for that young lady, for that parent, husband, wife, whoever it might be, speak to their heart. Our heads are still bowed and eyes are closed. Just a moment, we're going to sing. If God spoke to your heart, you know what I'd do? I'd get right out of my seat. I'd walk right down here to this altar. And I'd make things right. That's what I'd do. That's what I'd do. It's going to be too late one day, friend. God's going to catch up with you. He's going to catch up with you. He's going to say, you going somewhere? You let God speak to your heart this morning. You let God speak to your heart. Father, we pray right now in Jesus' name that you'd help every man, woman, boy, and girl in this church to come to this altar this morning that needs to come. Please, Lord, do it for Jesus' sake. Save somebody today. In your name we ask it. Amen. If you're here this morning and you need help, you just need your heart, get your heart right with God, maybe rededicate your life, you come on while they sing. You come on right now. So dark. Yeah, man. Come on, let's pray to If you're a husband, if you're a wife, you need to come. Come on, right now. Come on. Let's get down on your knees. Make so things right with God. Come on, come on, Dad. Come on. Come on, come on right now. Come on, come on, right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on.
That's right. Come on. And I'm hurting so. That's right. Come on. I need help from above. The touch of your love. You need to touch his love. Oh, hear my plea. Lord, help me. And Lord, help me. Before they sing in second verse this morning, God's speaking to your heart today. Listen, any little sissy can play football. It takes a man to stand up for Jesus Christ. It takes a man. You know what you've been hearing here this morning? This is what you call old-time religion. We're not modernists. We don't go along with the soft religion that's coming out in our day. Listen, there ain't nothing soft about this heaven, hell. There ain't no in-between. There ain't no God's cool and God's hip. No, no. He's holy. We're unholy. There's only one way to get to him, to his son, Jesus Christ. This is a real deal here. This is a real deal. They're going to sing that second verse. Come on, you come right now. Teenager, you come on right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on right now. Don't be ashamed. deep despair awaits you want your record to look clean clean the blood of Jesus can wash all them sins I don't care what you've done the blood of Jesus can make it clean I hope you got it right today amen amen thank y'all appreciate that